I'm Dr. Folio, radiologist at the NIH Clinical Center, and honored to give the introductory presentation on our virtual radiology preprocessor course. You'll be hearing from other faculty, research assistants, students that have gone through the program uh, as we convert more of these presentations into videos over the next several months. I should mention I have a research agreement with CareStream Health, which was recently acquired by Philips. It's the uh, packs that we use at the NIH Clinical Center that I'll show some of the automation that uh, radiology preprocessors can use. So why the RP or radiology preprocessor name? Who can be an RP and what do they do? Uh, I'll cover that as well as the objectives of the course as far as learning basic cross-sectional anatomy, some CT basics, uh, overview of radiology uh, modalities in general. Uh, though I'll show how RPs are trained to make measurements and use existing full automation with impacts and other uh, tools that will be posted on our website uh, later as well, and how um, they can improve patient care uh, immediately after training by faster notification of critical findings to the radiologist, having them triage the exam for us to look at it earlier and let the referring clinician know earlier. Also optimizes report value because the target lesions are uh, more concordant uh, when RPs are in the workflow, which we'll demonstrate uh, to you. It's also active learning and rewarding uh, for RPs to contribute to patient care in the workflow while being fully uh, remote. What is a radiology preprocessor and why the name? Well, rather than post-processing, which is what we call it at NIH, where lesion measurements are made after a radiologist reports, um, pre-processing would be doing this beforehand. This way, the radiologists are um, importing the verified target lesions when known into our reports, therefore locking them, making our reports more valuable. Also, um, uh, some of the other names that you might hear for radiology preprocessors are radiologist assistants, scribes, image analysis technologists, post-processor, or uh, core lab staff. Uh, this article, by the way, um, the reference here, uh, Dr. Doe uh, led over the period of a year. Uh, we looked at uh, over 1,200 radiology pre-processed exams, and I'll give some of the results of the improved uh, concordance of uh, target lesions. What do RPs do? Uh, again, they'll make measurements using automation, assisting the automation before the radiologist opens the exam, identify incidental critical findings when present. Then they can triage those exams, um, the priority to us as radiologists, and then we notify the clinician that much earlier. I'll say that a few times here, that's important. Who can be a radiology preprocessor? I would say anyone that's interested in healthcare, anatomy, technology, imaging, uh, we often get uh, medical students or college students, radiologic technologists that want to brush up their skills in anatomy, get a feel for what the radiology workflow is. Uh, this is becoming more popular now with engineers and coders um, interested in machine learning training and knowing the anatomy that much better uh, when uh, labeling or analyzing uh, labeled data. So the course objectives uh, include a Overview of diagnostic imaging, uh, fairly basic, but um, pretty broad to include uh, currently X-ray and tomography, uh, computer tomography, soon MRI and ultrasound nuclear medicine. Uh, in addition to learning cross-sectional anatomy for CT, uh, eventually uh, MR body will be soon and neuroanatomy uh, for future presentations. And um, the RPs will experience, um, depending on uh, your workflow, uh, experience radiologist work through workflow through integration and this act of learning is shown to be more effective over simply observing. We often get uh, asked if radio, uh, radiology students or students interested in radiology uh, would like to shadow with us and we don't have shadowing, we have this, uh, this program, instead it's more uh, active. Uh, so it's similar to how medical schools are starting to integrate medical students with uh, hybrid type of PACs, which we have. Uh, and there's a reference here from UVA. Uh, so I'll show how they can improve patient care and clinical trials, increase target lesion measurement concordance threefold in our study. Also uh, faster referring clinician notification of critical findings. And 
Um, something that uh, radiologists like and helps with um, minimizing burnout is decreased radiologist dictation time in that uh, we rarely are making uh, measurements. Uh, and this is the way automation will be doing this for us in the future. It also engages the students, similar to residents or medical students doing this type of program and improves the learning. Uh, there's instant feedback through this process. Um, they also find it more satisfying experiencing the radiologist workflow, contributing positively to patient care, improving reports, uh, and the hybrid packs and other communication workflows uh, will help know what, when an exam is ready. Uh, that'll be discussed in the workflow presentation. But uh, the radiology course overview, we've already uh, clicked on this particular presentation probably. That's where we are now, introduction to radiology pre-processing. Uh, we also talk about radiology modality overview, cross-sectional CT anatomy, uh, how to identify critical uh, incidental findings, um, more detail about the workflow, of course, the PACS picture archiving communication system, other third-party apps will be um, introduced uh, as well from other centers, and a presentation on clinical trials and what they're all about, including criteria such as RESYST 1.1, uh, the response evaluation criteria and the solid tumors. Uh, so RPs exist, um, will leverage existing lesion identification tools. I'll show an example of a fully automated uh, lesion identification and measuring uh, tool in our advanced packs and uh, this is becoming more available. Uh, some uh, fully automated uh, and 100% uh, using AI. Uh, and uh, some I'll show you include volumetrics, which um, a lot of centers may not be doing yet, but um, it has that possibility. Um, and since the ERPs focus on training on these tools, uh, that improves the radiologist efficiency, not having to do this. And we focus on the clinical. Uh, and when the measurements are already made, it's easier for us to import into the reports, uh, to import into uh, as hyperlinks. Here's an example that we did back in 2012, published in 2013, with um, segmentations of metastatic lesions here in the lung, the liver, and metastatic melanoma in the, in the skin here. And an example of follow-up where, here's the follow-up exam and the click of one button, uh, we'll then find um, every lesion, uh, well, most every lesion that's still not 100%, and that's where radiology preprocessors can help. Uh, but then this is something uh, that, uh, when followed up, the radiologist doesn't have to do, again, can just import the measurements that the uh, radiology preprocessor uh, focused on. Here's an example of uh, what the preprocessors learn as far as recess, uh, target lesions, um, how to select them, going through some of these references that talks about ideal target lesions. Also using the preferred two diameter measurement tool, which uh, is one button for us, so you draw the long axis and then the short axis perpendicular to that long axis, uh, which is required for lymph nodes. And the data, the recognition uh, software will only pick up on the short axis. If it is, the, it'll tell you which one is the short axis. And that is only known based on uh, being shorter than the long axis. It's a little confusing, but um, it is important for several reasons to do uh, these types of measurements, not just a single line. And so these are already done for us and they're done very carefully. Uh, and I'll show you how that helps with machine learning training as well. There's several workflow possibilities depending on institutions that we've been uh, working with and have heard from. Uh, if we, we show an example in a clinical trial setting at NIH, for example, where uh, most imaging exams were pre-processed, however, um, when pre-processed, it can be more valuable because they're locked into our reports. Uh, academic centers with residents may be different because residents typically aren't uh, involved in these processes, uh, not that we know of, at least not uh, at our center. It's completely separate. Um, they may benefit from some of the presentations such as clinical trials um, or how some of the special tools of the PACs, otherwise it's separate. And from private practice, we've heard uh, a variety of um, settings with collaborative import reporting, where if there aren't resonance, this collaborative reporting allows for more attention to the report, the measurements, and the annotations. Also, um, active learning in a radiologist workflow is uh, an ideal 
uh, environment. So RP integrated radiologist workflow, I'll go into more detail with, and there's another uh, presentation just dedicated to this, but basically the RP opens the exam, measures the lesions before the radiologist opens the exam. That's already done for us. They determine which are the uh, um, our target lesions um, and objectify uh, those by measuring them, um, make any annotations such as ovals for critical findings. And uh, we are notified uh, when that exam is complete and we know when to pick that up. Uh, and we initially review the exam that has the measurements without seeing them. Those are toggled off. Uh, it also hides our dual energy ring. Uh, so we're not looking at any of those. Then when formulating the impression towards the third or fourth minute in the CT, depending on the type, uh, we'll then toggle on the measurements and then scroll through each one and import the ones that we like into our reports and delete any of the ones that we don't like. And if there are discussions Coordinate measurements, we will go ahead and uh, report that on a separate document for the learning. And the interactive reporting brings all the data into uh, our report without us having to uh, cross-reference that. We just see that it's the correct measurement. Uh, so they're also trained to report the clinical, the critical findings uh, once identified. So that would be triage. They would say, Dr. Folio, I think you need to look at this exam sooner than later. And so we'll pick up that exam next. And then it's about getting that exam read and contacting that referring clinician. Could be PE, that's one of the most common for us, pulmonary embolus. Uh, we've also seen tension in the small bowel obstruction, abscess, appendicitis. There's uh, about 10 or 20 of these that they learn about and they're not uh, responsible for finding them, but um, they usually do uh, pick up on most of these after a short amount of training. This is just a graphic that'll be explained in more detail in that dedicated presentation, but basically, Again, RP opens the exam, measures, looks for any critical findings. If they are, they notify us. If not, the radiologist uh, opens the exam uh, when they're caught up uh, and will then uh, import those annotations into our report. From the data management and the learning, uh, the RPs will keep track of the time that it takes them, how many uh, annotations are there, and then uh, they'll look at our um, reports later to see uh, what they might have missed uh, and we'll put in the discrepancies and that'll go into a scorecard. They also can compare that scorecard by using gamification techniques to help learning where this provides incentives to participate and get better. Uh, you can see here the times uh, are getting uh, quicker for these two RPs and the discrepancies are also going down. So that's weighted into how much time it takes because like radiologists, it's about getting through these quickly. And uh, here are examples of a leaderboard where an RP can select to have a call sign and have that posted. Uh, and so they can compare uh, where they are similar to uh, video games. And the workflow, as I've mentioned, and I'll mention a couple of times, can improve patient care, improves our reports in that uh, they're identified to, they're, they're trained to identify and select target lesions, uh, which radiologists don't typically go in to, to look at. Uh, but knowing that these are the target lesions, we import them into our reports, they're locked, um, and uh, making our report more valuable to the oncologist. They're also trained, as I mentioned, to recognize incidental, actionable, critical findings. And this improves our turnaround time. It can be minutes versus hours. Uh, in fact, 2.6 hours earlier on the average, according to uh, one year looking back on this. So an ideal scenario for a cancer patient um, is having this interactive report with the verified target lesions in the report. They're, they're locked in there, otherwise they could be changed. Uh, and then the oncologist sees the report, can click on them. Uh, these are the target lesions. They can make the calculation that day, the day the patient is in. Uh, clinic and instantly know what the response category is before the patient goes back to their referral center. Uh, as far as machine learning uh, training, um, the RPs emphasize careful two diameter measurements as I showed you. They're also careful how they make the ovals around the abnormal findings. And this improves the, um, the labeling data for machine learning, which I'll show you in, in a second. So their attention to this improves that training um, you can go to this uh, um, publication we just uh, did with uh, Stanford on uh, using uh, this type of workflow and interactive reporting to improve uh, 
machine learning training. Here's an example that we did with the uh, phantom study, very basic study with pliable um, known volumes of, uh, fan of uh, lesions where uh, we did an intersection of union uh, comparing to the actual volumes and volumetric segmentation showing that two diameter measurements would make a better bounding box as well as ovals if they're made carefully around the lesion. Then we looked at what our prior uh, use of the two line diameter tool was versus the one line. And uh, there are needs for the one line measurements, but uh, we needed to increase those and our ovals. So after this uh, training and this uh, uh, presentation at, um, at Savvy, we demonstrated uh, over time that we did improve overall our annotations where there are now more two line measurements, which again, will make better bounding boxes and as well, um, more ovals and uh, fewer arrows because uh, the arrows don't really do us any good. Um, I mean, they're good for pointing out something, but the tip of the arrow is very hard to find in a bounding box, create a bounding box. Here's an example of a nice oval and RP made around bronchiectasis, which we then tied into our report with our hyperlink. So these are directly connected and that would help for machine learning. Here's an example of uh, one of our uh, deep learning uh, programs where we demonstrated, here's an oval that I had made, not very carefully. I didn't include this third ground glass nodule. Um, so it didn't pick it up. I could have done better, but uh, it still knew where to look. And then we have the pathology as well. So as this is combined uh, with the RAD, the path and the path and, and the, um, the findings and the machine learning, uh, we look at this as a, an AI radiomics uh, when we know uh, the gene, which we most often do. So in summary, I provided uh, an overview of radiology preprocessors, the course touched on the course objectives such as cross-sectional anatomy, pathology, and radiology modalities, and showed how RP's careful augmentation of automation in the workflow can improve report value patient care, faster notification of critical findings, um, and the outcomes for, for them as far as learning. It's rewarding uh, for them to contribute to patient care and the interaction continually improves as we are giving them these grades and they look to see if they've made it onto the leaderboard. Um, so here's our, our team as, as of now and uh, we're available for questions and uh, thank you for your attention.